Hey class, welcome to the unit nine discussion and you're on your last module. You've got just unit nine and unit 10 left. And this last module is where we look at how we use sample statistics to estimate population parameters. So during your seminar this week and in your reading, you'll be learning about how we use sample results as a way to try to estimate unknown population parameters because you know typically we're not going to be able to reach entire populations but we have good estimation tools available to give accurate estimates so you're looking on your screen here at the four parts to the unit nine discussion the first three parts numbered one two and three right here are going to be discussion types of parts where you're you're just asked to explain what we mean by things offer some real life examples um, so on each of those three parts, you're just going to be thinking about, you know, examples of population parameters where we might not be able to reach a population and, you know, what are some real life examples of those situations. In part two, you'll talk about the role that the size of your sample has with your estimates. You know, is it better to take a large sample or a small sample, which tends to give us better, more accurate estimates. And in part three, uh, you know, we're going to be looking at can we actually get a perfect estimate? Can we estimate things with 100% accuracy when we rely on sample statistics? Uh, what are your feelings about that? So just a few sentences on each of those. Then we get to part four, which is where you're gonna be calculating the margin of error. So this is the part I wanna walk y'all through just in case anybody is anxious or a little bit worried about how to do this or you're not sure on the directions and. Um, I'll be walking you through how to how to do what they're asking you to do using Excel and so forth. So part four says the value of the margin of error, which is the symbol E, can be calculated using the appropriate formula. The formula depends on whether one is estimating a mean or a proportion. So this is where this these directions might be a little bit confusing. You see down here right below part four then that they give you two formulas for margin of error. This formula right here is the formula we use for quantitative variables when we're trying to estimate a mean or average of a population. This margin of error formula is for proportions, and we use this when we are talking about a qualitative variable and trying to estimate a percentage, you know, such as percentage of um, people, percentage of students in a university who are psychology majors or you know, something like that. So being a psychology major or not is a qualitative variable and we can estimate that percentage using that second formula. But as of unit nine, you're only going to have learned means, how to estimate means of quantitative variables. So for this discussion, even though this proportion formula is given to you down here, you're only going to be using this formula right here that I'm highlighting. So that's a little unclear. Some students go ahead and email and say, you know, do we use both formulas? In unit nine discussion, no, you don't. In unit 10 discussion, you will, but not only in the unit nine discussion, we only use this one for means. And so keep that in mind. Then um, what it says to do, continuing on again, and it's again, kind of hard to see that part four continues on here. Invent a variable that has to be quantitative. So such as age, that's quantitative, weight, exam score, any quantitative variable where it makes sense to calculate a mean, an average. Next, invent a small set of data, 20 data values. So you yourself will create a hypothetical data set of 20 values, or at least a minimum of 20, um, for your particular chosen variable, okay? Then use Excel to calculate the sample mean of your data set and the sample standard deviation. Obviously, if you create 20 values, your sample size will be 20. Use your data and calculations to determine the margin of error E for your data set. Then use the formula for means that I pointed out up here and show and include all your work and Excel results in your post. Include your data set in your post and attach your Excel document. And y'all make sure everybody remembers to attach your Excel document that has your data set in it. Otherwise, we won't be able to check your work. So make sure you have everybody has an attachment to their initial post this week. Okay, 
So first thing it asked us to do then was invent a variable that's got to be quantitative. So hypothetically, I'm going to go ahead and just say, let's suppose I have a sample of students taking a statistics course. And my variable of interest is going to be their exam scores. Okay, so in your post, you're going to tell us what your hypothetical variable is. I'm saying it's exam scores. Make sure it's quantitative. And you're then going to go into Excel. So let me open up a blank Excel workbook. I'm going to actually even right here type in exam scores so that even clearly when people open up my attachment, they'll be able to see that that was my variable name, although you also ought to mention it in your post in the response box. Exam scores, and I've got to come up with 20 hypothetical values for exam scores. So I'm just going to type in 85, 68, 72, 94, 91, 92, 88, 84, 94, 65, 96, 91, 87, 84, 82, 95, 96, 78, 74. And that's at cell 20, but since I started at cell 2, I've got to go one more than that. So we will go ahead and put a 95. All right, so those that represents my one sample of size 20 because I've got 20 exam scores. And so what we were asked to do is to calculate the sample mean, which is the symbol X bar, and to calculate the sample standard deviation, which is the symbol S. You can either use your data analysis tool pack, which is under data, data analysis tool pack, if you want to. We've been, you know, we've talked about that since the beginning of the course. Or since it's just two calculations that you need, then you can just use your equal functions, your Excel functions. So I am just going to come over here to this cell right here, start with an equal sign so Excel knows I'm doing a formula, and then type average. I can come down here and pick it up right there. And this will calculate the sample mean. Once I open up the parentheses, I come over here and click and drag, but I'm only clicking and dragging down the numbers, not the column heading. Close the parentheses and then press Enter. And there's my sample mean. In fact, you can even, to make it clear for your readers, just put sample mean right here. Then I'm going to do equals. And remember for sample standard deviation, you have to make sure you do STDEV, not dot P, which will be the first one that shows up. You have to do the dot S, which stands for sample. Otherwise, if you do the dot P, you're assuming this is the entire population. And for Unit 9, we're, we're, it's hypothetically saying we cannot reach the whole population. This is just a smaller sample. So make sure you do the standard deviation dot S, open parentheses, click and drag down your 20 values, close it, and press Enter, and maybe even type in sample standard deviation. Now, it would be good... Uh, it tells you actually in the instructions to include your values that you got in your post. So hopefully by now everybody knows how to use a snipping tool. And you can actually snip this and include it, insert the image straight into your post. All right. In fact, I'm going to even just show my work all right here and then point out how you can just snip the whole thing and include it in your, uh, insert the image in your response box for your post. Also, though, make sure you attach your original Excel workbook so that we can check your calculations. Okay, so now what we're going to do then is go back, take a look at these instructions. We've already got the sample mean of our data set right here and the sample standard deviation. We know the sample size is 20 because we specifically um, made up 20 values. And so now we are going to determine the margin of error for this sample and for our estimate. So we're going to use the E formula for means, show and include all work, and then I'll, I'll snip it so that I can then save it as an image and insert it directly into my post. All right, so here's the formula. E equals 1.96, and I'm going to go ahead and just copy that, come back over to my Excel worksheet right here, paste that. And then I'm just going to show you that to calculate it, we're just doing E equals 
1.96 times. Now the we see the S in the formula. Remember S was sample standard deviation, which we calculated up here to be the 9.654424. If you don't go to that many decimal places, that's okay. You're just going to be a little more accurate, the more decimal places, more precise, the more decimal places you go to. So 1.96 times the uh, sample standard deviation divided by square root of our n, which is our sample size, and that's a 20, okay? Now, if you take a calculator then and put this in, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can go onto Web 2.0. And on your screen, you see that I've got the Web 2.0 calculator. You know, there are plenty of online calculators. You may have found one you like better. Um, this one's pretty easy to use, and a lot of students use this. So here's what we've got to put into that calculator. And just pretty much follow it the way I typed it in. We've got 1.96 times 9.6544. Divided by, so I'm clicking the division symbol, and then square root is right here. So square root, it even puts it in as SQRT. Of the 20, close the parentheses and press equals. So you'll see, and here it even shows it up here in regular formula format. So you'll see that our margin of error is roughly around 4.23. You certainly do not need to take it to quite this many decimal places. So we have 4.23 for our margin of error. And that, that is what you're asked to calculate. You can go farther and do the confidence interval if you want to, but for the discussion purposes, you really only need to calculate the margin of error. This number reflects how far away we believe that our sample statistic could be from the population mean. So we like this to be uh, as small as possible because the smaller it is, that means we feel like we're closer and closer to the true population parameter. You can also actually do this calculation in Excel. If I go equals 1.96 times, and because my sample standard deviation is in cell C7, if you look right here, that's C7, I just click there and it's automatically going to put that value right there, slash, then SQRT is what I need in Excel lingo, open parentheses and then put in my 20, then I'm going to press enter and you'll notice Excel gives me the same answer. I didn't even really have to go to Web 2.0, although I know some of my students are, feel a little bit more comfortable doing that or using their actual um, you know, calculators that they have. So there's your margin of error. So that all you really have to do now is use your snipping tool. I will come down here. Let me stretch this down here so you can see what I'm doing. Use my snipping tool, and I'm going to type S. Get uh, SNI and it recognizes that I want my snipping tool. Come up here, click new, and then I would just snip from like here to here and then file, save that as an image so that then when you go to your response box, you can click the insert image icon and go browse for find this and automatically have this inserted. So it's easy to see your data set, your sample mean your sample standard deviation calculations, your formula, and even your uh, answer for your, um, for your margin of error. Now, the other thing is for help this week, just whether it be in the discussion or really probably more so for some of your exercises, there is a worksheet that's been provided for you that um, you're going to be able to use to help you with the confidence interval calculations this week in your MSL homework. So I'm now going to actually share that workbook. Let me even move this over here. Open up the workbook. It will look like this. And you will see that, um, let me go ahead and put this on the, minimize the screen so that we can see that. And I'm going to show you that we can get the same answers, but just using the workbook that has been programmed to do it all for you. Now, I think that there's value to, to understand how to do the formulas by hand. That's why I wanted to show you that. It's important to practice that and have an understanding of 
what we're really doing with calculating margin of error and then from there calculating the confidence interval. But once you get comfortable with what the uh, calculation is by hand and how to use the formula, then this is just sort of a quick shot worksheet where you can just put in your information. So to show you how to calculate this same margin of error that we got, I'm going to come up here and click sample size, which remember was 20. The sample mean, uh, remember from our output right here, that was 85.55. Remember that was the first thing we calculated in Excel. So 85.55. The sample standard deviation was that long number that we got, although you don't have to take it to that many places. 9654424 was what we got from uh, calculating the S in Excel. And since the margin of error was not given, we're calculating it by ourselves, then we leave that last green box blank. We press enter, and you'll see that it calc this worksheet calculates the margin of error for you. There's your 4.23 number right here um, that gives you your margin of error. You did In the discussion, you did not have to calculate the actual confidence interval, but these two numbers are the lower and upper bound of your confidence interval, which um, have been obtained by taking the sample mean of 85.55 and doing plus or minus this margin of error, getting the lower bound on the left and the upper bound on the right. So, you know, basically this is saying we are 95% confident that if we could reach the entire population, that the true mean exam score would be somewhere between those two values. That's what it means to construct a confidence interval. So, you know, you'll be asked to do some calculations in this unit's work. Next week will be even more calculations. You're welcome to use formulas by hand, Excel, this Excel workbook to help you do these calculations. But you will want to be careful as to whether the questions ask you to find margin of error, whether they ask you to calculate uh, or construct the confidence interval. And then some of the questions will even give you the margin of error and ask you to find out the sample size. That's when you'll fill in this last green box, and then it will automatically calculate the sample size uh, that you would need to achieve that margin of error. But it totally depends on what the question's asking you, so make sure you all read all of the questions carefully, looking out for keywords so you'll know what it is exactly that you're trying to find. So I hope that's helpful for your Unit 9 discussion and your work throughout the week this week.